So, whoops. Good morning, everyone. And I am um, just needing to get myself totally situated here. This week's uh, Torah portion is uh, Toldot. And we're not going to be focusing on it, but I wanted to mention it because the um, Torah commentary that I've been reading this season um, is from Erin Smokler. So you've heard me mention her name um, a couple of times already. And her commentary this week focuses entirely on the first line of blessing that Isaac gives to Jacob. And the very last paragraph of her commentary this week relates to the theme that I was planning for today that we will be delving into in a minute. So I'm using that as my little segue. And so this is from Erin Smokler. This model of blessed connection through regular small acts of kindness rather than through singular grand gestures resonates with human relationships too, no doubt. Better to give a friend a day in and day out, a smile, a phone call, a favor, than to celebrate them once a year with a big present. Presence, interdependence, mutual vulnerability, still and small voices. These are the building blocks of ongoing reciprocal relationships. May we all give and give again. May we all receive and receive again. So today, we are going to be spending our time um, receiving and extending love and loving care and loving connection. So I thought that that was just so relevant. So as a quick review for the last um, two weeks, we've been talking about receiving care uh, receiving loving care, and um, and today we're going to move into extending that loving care. So first, we create a field of care for ourselves, a field of loving energy, and we do that by bringing to mind a caring moment, a benefactor, or a spiritual field. And we have recognized that sometimes we create barriers for ourselves. And that the best way to work with resistance for anything is to acknowledge it and to allow it. So that's the, the ground. So why do we do this? We're not doing this so that we can feel good and hoard all those good feelings. That is not the point. What we know is that when we feel really open and when we feel really cared for and loved, we naturally extend that care and compassion to others. So we really are engaging in this practice in order to share it. That's the point. So it, it, it's um, one of the visuals that I, kind of come up with for myself is that I'm receiving loving care. I'm receiving this um, feeling of just being held and, and cared for so completely and so fully as though I'm some sort of a vessel and I'm overflowing. And what do I do with that overflow? I share it. So I'm never depleting myself by extending this kind of care and compassion to others because I'm constantly receiving as well. And frankly, this is the way to guard against burnout. It's a way to guard against, you know, the, the phrase compassion fatigue comes up. So 
And that's why we're doing all of this. We're taking care of ourselves and we're taking care of everyone else. And I'm sure that you can all recall a time when you were not in such a good mood and somebody did or said something that just lifted you. So that's what we're, we're talking about doing. We, if we can be lifting ourselves and if we can be then sharing that with other people through a small gesture, many, many times a day, Maybe that can become the next pandemic. Wouldn't that be nice? So today um, we're gonna do an extended guided meditation of receiving and extending love. And we're going to begin in this receptive mode where we're receiving loving care and we're letting that um, flow of loving energy extend to others. And using John McCransky's word, he, he says this helps us commune with others. And he's using commune um, as uh, that pre-verbal sense of closeness and sensing the other as a whole life, a full person possessed of great worth and potential. And he relates it to what Martin Buber referred to as the I-thou relationship as opposed to an I-it relationship. And McCransky spends a fair amount of time talking about how in normal day-to-day -day life, we are very reductionist in how we look at other people. We label them, and then we think of them as that label. And this is counter to that. This is the exact opposite of that. So in my way of thinking, this is putting that focus on um, everyone is B'Tselem Elohim. Everyone is in the divine image. So that we're focusing on that divinity, that grace, um, that dignity and potential with everyone and wishing everyone well, the same, the same wishes for, for other people that we wish for ourselves. So we're going to move into our sit now because it's going to, as I said, be um, the long guided meditation. So I invite you to take your seat. And let's take a few nice, comfortable, yet deeper and slower breaths. Really settling. Inhaling and exhaling fully. Allowing yourself to be well supported where you're sitting. and moving from your head down into your body. Noticing where in your body you feel your breath most prominently. And now I invite you to bring to mind your field of care. So this can be a specific caring moment where you felt really held and cared for unconditionally without judgment. Or you could bring to mind a benefactor, someone who just helps you feel wonderful. Thinking of this person brings a smile to your heart. And again, not a perfect person, 
but a perfect moment with that person. Or it can be a spiritual field. Where you are receiving caring from maybe ancestors or spiritual figures. So bring this field of care into your body. So this isn't a thought exercise. See if you can re-experience this moment right now. So relax into the felt sense of this experience. Allowing this loving energy to enter every pore of your body. So that your entire body is being infused with this loving care. So accept this loving energy and its qualities. There is a real unconditional quality of care. If part of you is having trouble with this, or your attention starts to wander away, see if you can just settle back into your field of care and become compassionately aware of that part that's having difficulty. And see if um, maybe you can entice that part into your field of care. Just allowing it giving it the space it needs to relax and to find its own way. So imagine that you're really filling up with this energy from your field of care. And, and we're going to begin now to extend this field of care. So I invite you to think of somebody that it will be very easy for you to extend loving care to. Someone who you will naturally wish well. And I also want to invite you to continue bringing this loving energy into yourself if you're not ready to extend it yet. That's okay. So while you're continuing to receive the loving energy within your field of care, let that energy come through you now to this person that's in your mind's eye. And imagine that this caring energy is 
just beaming into this other person, into their whole being. And let this flow of loving energy help you commune with them, noticing their deep dignity and worth and wishing them well. For some, it might be easiest to do this by visualizing your benefactor standing behind you, beaming loving care into you. So it's in and all around you. And then you beaming it out to the person who you bring in your mind's eye to be in front of you. So you become this conduit. So it's as though the care comes into your heart space and flows out of your heart space, constantly being replenished. Now, if you are ready, you can let this flow of love extend more broadly. You can let the loving energy come through you now to include more people. And over time, you can gradually increase the circle of beings that you're including in your well wishes. So for example, we can now, if we so choose, to bring everyone who's on this meditation call together in our mind's eye and send this loving energy to everyone on this call. As you continue practicing this kind of meditation, slowly you will want to expand the circle and eventually include strangers and people whom you have difficulty with and eventually everyone and everything on the planet. My suggestion is to create these concentric circles slowly and in your own time without rushing. So I encourage you now to begin to let go of your visualizations and settle into the felt sense of love and compassion that you're experiencing.
Let this help your mind trust and relax and release its grip and become more and more open. And see if you can let any patterns of thought or feelings that are starting to form just unwind and release within this openness. As you very, very slowly and gently come back to the room, I'm going to read a poem called Open Heart by Jonathan Green. Crack me open to reveal my beating heart, unused and lonely, waiting. Feel my rhythm. It knows not who it beats for, but thumps in cadence with hope. Listen to me, not my words, but the sound of my soul breathing. It's not as easy as one would think to have an open heart with all that I fear and all that I don't, but I will do it. I will stretch myself to have an open heart so that love can come inside. 